Hi and welcome to a new episode of Crochet Along With Me. I'm Andrea and in this series I invite you to come out with me in nature and take a crochet project with you and just enjoy the silence or the noise of nature and breathe in some fresh air while working on some of our favorite projects. This is the first episode for 2023 and I wanted to work on my whip or work in progress but apparently I forgot my hook. So I will tell you what I can about it but I will not be able to work on it <laughs> right now. This episode will be divided in two parts. The first one, the introduction that I will do here outside and the second part where I show you everything that I've made in December of last year and this month and whips I'm working on and any pattern plans that I have coming up. So this particular whip is a Tunisian crochet asymmetrical rounded triangle shawl or you could call it a crescent but I've been accused of calling triangles crescents even though they look more like crescents than triangles but anyway so this is the shape you work it from one point going towards the wider side here and you have these eyelets that create a nice texture in the fabric this is how it will be worn with the right side facing out this is the same kind of yarn that I used for the florid capelet that I have a tutorial for on this channel and it's quite as mindless as that one even more so because you only have eight rows to keep count of and then you just repeat those eight rows. I started this project as we were about to go to the Czech Republic for our holidays but I didn't work much on it in the car. I actually found the yarn for the cowl that I'm wearing now in the Czech Republic and I started working on it immediately and I had enough yarn to make mitts as well. Well they're not quite full but they're this long. But after returning from the trip I actually started really enjoying the meditative nature of this very simple pattern and I will have a video tutorial and a pattern for it written up soon I hope so <laughs> and I have more plans of making shawls that work like this as you work them so instead of going this way like I usually do with the decreases at the end of the row you have increases at the end of the row and decreases at the beginning of the row. You can do a lot of stuff with the eyelets and their disposition in this pattern. So initially I had made a different shawl with this yarn and while I still like the pattern for that I didn't feel like it worked with this yarn. This is wool, it's a Katya Infinity shawl if I remember correctly. So it likes to scrunch up a bit. So the pattern I had used for it previously wasn't great and I just frogged the whole thing and made a cake. I made this cake on my yarn winder and there's still a bit left to go but when it starts to crumble in on itself I will make a separate video to show you how to deal with that and what to do with the cake that's not no longer in the shape of a cake. But for now, apparently I can't crochet, so I have to pack up soon. As I already told you, I made these two projects that I'm wearing right now in January after our trip to the Czech Republic from very nice and thick mohair yarn. It's a bit thicker than fingering weight or sport weight yarn and I love it so much. <laughs> I want to go back and get some more because on the shop they don't have any in this color or other colors that I like and it's I, I just love the working with it it's a mix of mohair and acrylic 
They say 65% mohair and it's made in the Czech Republic. So that's why I bought it actually. <laughs> I wanted to have a souvenir yarn and now I can't wait to go back and get some more. In December, I also tested this crochet hat that I'm wearing. It's made with short rows. So it's made sideways. And I wanted to learn how Anna Maria from Crochet Highway makes short rows for this hat. And I did. I, it's a nice method. So this is what the hat looks like with the yarns I chose. I think I will over dye this hat if I can. Maybe make it some dark blue or closer to black. These two yarns are actually the same yarn but the orange I dyed and I don't remember with what. I think maybe onion skins. It's not 100% wool which is why it didn't take up color very well and I don't know I don't love the way <laughs> it looks. So the, the yarn itself is a kind of gradient made by mixing just like this one. So they mix uh, while spinning they mix different colors of yarn. So it's not dyed in. The gradient is created by spinning darker and darker colors together in a gradient. It was a very nice uh, test so if you're interested in testing for someone other than me you can always apply to Anna Maria's testing calls. She mostly designs clothing and I already tested something else for her last year. And also in December I finished this vest which I will tell you more about at home because it's cold and I want to go home. So I hope you enjoyed a little bit of nature and I will see you at home in one moment. Yay! Let's continue where we left off. But first, it's time to read a comment from the previous episode and I will do that now. Evelyn Oxner said, lovely. I'm working on a simple show, TV crochet and recently finished a pair of knit socks. I hope you've finished that shawl by now and if you want to you can share with me which pattern you use. Now if you also want one of your comments to be featured in the next vlog episode just make sure to leave a comment below whenever you want in the course of this video. To continue the discussion that we started outdoors let's talk a bit about this vest. It was supposed to be a um, sweater and it was supposed to be my second sample of a pattern that I'm trying to write up but it didn't go according to plan as you can see I don't have any sleeves so instead of making sleeves I actually made the leg warmers because that's all the yarn that I had as you can see it's not enough for sleeve and this pattern is in testing right now and will be out sometime soon but for the sweater, or the vest in this case, I used the same construction technique as for the orange sweater that you may have seen me wear, where I only have the lace on this section of the front. And I added some shaping here to accommodate the bust. And I extended the lace all the way down the neck cuff and the cuff at the bottom are knit on. So I picked up stitches on the edge and knit with a smaller needle. And on the armhole here, I just made single crochet stitches. If I'd known that I would make a vest, I would have made this armhole opening a bit larger going towards the neck. So it would look a bit better on my big arms, but <laughs> this is what we have. So in the pattern I will offer an option for a vest or a sweater with this kind of uh, construction for the armholes. With this kind of shaping you can use flat sleeves so you don't have, need to have the shaping required for sleeves that go like this towards the neck. On the back it's just simple stitch. So this is a project that I've been working on and putting off for many months. And I finished the vest in December. So it's an FO for December. As you know, I took December off from publishing things because I needed a break and 
and there were too many things happening anyway you had a lot of things to work on so I used this time to also learn a few things and try something new for me and to make something for the house so I made some slippers first I knit a pair of slippers that I've worn a lot since as you can see these are called the woodland loafer it's a pattern that you can buy as you can see there they have a very nice shape and I will try to make something similar in Tunisian crochet let's see if I can make something like this and after making these I decided to make a pair in Tunisian crochet also with chunky yarn because I had bought one pattern from Aruni Magoel from Knitter Notter but I discovered how warm these slippers are so I made slippers with her pattern but in the baby size <laughs> and chunky yarn so these are made with a 7 millimeter hook and chunky yarn for felting so it's wool just like the uh, slippers and I've also worn them a lot ever since finishing them I changed the shape here a little bit to make it a bit shorter otherwise it would have been this tall since I love these so much I decided to make hubby a pair as well and so far I haven't been successful at that I knit one slipper from the woodland loafers but it's too big even though the gauge was perfect and the size was correct it's still too big and now I have to frog this even though I don't really want to but I have to because I don't want to make another one and felt them to his exact size because that's more work than I'm willing to put in so I will undo this slipper and at some point figure out a way to use the Tunisian crochet slipper pattern to make him a pair as well this is what I have so far for Tunisian crochet so these were made in December all of all of the slippers I wanted to make some more for myself as well and I only got to make one and then I started working in January so I stopped but I will get back into it because these are very nice if you don't have carpet everywhere in your house and you don't like wearing the flip-flops these are very nice in the last vlog episode I was working on a shawl and now it's finished it doesn't look at all like wings so I've decided to call it Daisy and it will work with Morning Glory and with Marigold which I've also shown you in another vlog and these three will be part of a collection of flower shawls they're not directly inspired by the flowers but that's what they remind me of so that's the name I'm giving them and I'm actually working on writing up this pattern so it should be out for testing soon then I will do marigold and then daisy because I want to get them finished and if I start working on daisy then I'm sure I will not <laughs> finish these other two I've also finished the mohair capelet this is the face of the fabric I don't actually love it but I think it would look very nice in a thicker yarn or with a smaller hook and maybe a few more rows of Tunisian reverse stitch on the edge here just to make sure that it doesn't curl up as it has a tendency to do that as you can see I like the construction with the eyelets just not the result with this yarn because you can't actually see the pattern created by the eyelets which is a pity because I worked so hard on this one I don't know if I will frog it or just keep it for as a sample or maybe I will make another one with a gradient in December I also made one glove 
I wanted to make wool gloves for myself because you can't really buy woolen gloves and even though it fits almost well I don't love it I don't know why maybe because the fingers are short I still need to give it a bath and see if the fingers will become a bit longer and everything a bit more relaxed because right now it feels stuffy so I don't love this glove which is why I didn't make the second one maybe it's also the color of the yarn which is great for socks but not so much for gloves so I still have enough yarn to make a second glove and then I will see what happens to them maybe I will give them a bath with some dye <laughs> just like with the hat and then I will probably like it more I like that the pattern I chose has sides for the different hands so the thumb is a bit on the inside of the palm not exactly on the outside like this which is cool I think it's nice for the hand warmers I didn't really do this because you don't have fingers but as you can see from wearing you actually create that shape where the thumb sits a bit inside of the hand so this is made with sock wool and I will put a link in the description of the video to the pattern which I only used for stitch counts and this part of the thumb I actually used the stitch pattern from the written instructions everything else I'm, I made in stockinette because the yarn is busy enough as it is and I wanted some basic gloves not something fancy as for whips the last time I showed you this sweater it was only this long I actually undid the section that I made around here I don't remember how many sections there were and I moved the stitch markers here for the arm separation a bit towards the outside so I made the arms smaller and I forgot <laughs> so to make the sleeves I needed to increase here in the first section to compensate for the rows that I, I didn't have anymore because I moved the stitch markers from where they were by six stitches so each sleeve I, I have to add 12 more rows so they fit my arm circumference and then I, I decrease as the sleeve grows I made this sleeve twice and I had to frog it twice which is why <laughs> the sweater is not finished yet but now I have a good idea and it fits well I will show you in a couple of minutes what it looks like on me and as if you remember I said that the body was a bit tight and now it's it just fits perfectly <laughs> with the added rows in the first section if you watched my purling video on how to do the Tunisian purl stitch you will recognize this ribbing which I did on the edge with one row of simple stitch and one row of purl stitch Ideally, this will also become a pattern after I finish it and figure out the stitch counts for different sizes. And then we will have some testing. I am still working on the filet crochet projects because they are very big and I misplaced one of them. <laughs> the brown one, I don't know where it is. I will find it at some point and finish it, but I can show you the purple one. As you can see it's about halfway there and I work on it mostly on in, in, in the evening when I don't have anything more interesting to make. <laughs> I actually want to finish this as a blanket because it's too big to be a shawl. But if you use thinner yarn and a smaller hook you can also make it into a shawl. Now for the more exciting things, as you know there is the 
McCulling's shawl crochet along happening right now and this is my progress so far from the first week it's the first section and then a bit of the second because I got interrupted but I will finish it up and publish the third and fourth sections on Friday so if you don't already know about the event there is a link on my blog and there will be a link in the description and you will see all the information there about the event and by March 24th I should have a second sample of the McCowings shawl done. I'm using two cakes of this acrylic with wool yarn. It's very thin but as you can see it shows the lace details very nicely. So I really enjoy that. I will make reels and shorts to show you the progress of each week and if you want to watch that make sure you're subscribed to the channel and one last thing I want to share with you also a work in progress is an idea that was inspired by the McCowings shawl but I wanted to make it easier so that it doesn't have 13 different sections I wanted to make it easier to learn and to just keep repeating so I made a um, bigger feather pattern that can be repeated around to make a shawl or a capelet with feathers. Initially I wanted to use this yarn that I got on vacation in Italy and while it's a very nice yarn it just doesn't work for the pattern. So I made one uh, feather in this yarn which is 45% wool, 45% cotton and 10% alpaca and it just didn't work so I got discouraged and mm, let it lie for a while and today I thought if I can make the McCowings shawl in an acrylic yarn and it shows the lace stitches so well maybe I could do the same with a similar yarn with acrylic in it for the other one and then I did because I have a lot of yarn in my stash that I bought a while ago and didn't know what to do with so here it is it's actually upside down so you work it like this this is one feather I blocked it because otherwise you couldn't see anything what do you think? I think I will need three bowls of this yarn to make a full shawl because this section takes about 20 grams and there I will need a lot of these but it should be uh, nice when it's finished right and yes it's sparkly I don't know if you can see it on camera which is why I haven't used it and I don't know why I bought it but I think it will look nice so this will be an ostrich uh, ostrich fan shawl ostrich feather shawl ostrich wings shawl we'll see the shape reminds me of those big and fluffy ostrich feathers that you can use to decorate costumes as for patterns there are some under construction some in testing I mean one is in testing but there will be more coming soon um, I have two that I need to release and for one of them I want to make a video for next week so subscribe if you want to know when that comes for this cowl I want to make a video for the stitch pattern and then I will launch the pattern next week and the video in two weeks so if you buy the pattern you will have early access to the video because and now we can get into the last part of this video I have some plans so in this part of the video I would like to talk about some plans for 2023 and going forward last year I overdid it a little bit and I paid for it in health <laughs> issues so this year I have decided that I will follow 
a schedule that I set up every week. So every week I have one big task. This will be the main subject of the weekly emails that you get if you're an email subscriber and they will allow me time to create the content that I publish quite regularly as you can see. So this includes videos, blog posts, patterns, tests, events, collaborations, stuff like that. Anything that isn't already written out or published will take at least one week. So I will give myself one week to finish one big thing. This week it's this vlog which takes me one day to film, one day to edit and one day to prepare for publishing. If I have one full week to do the task then I can use whatever time is left over after finishing the task to work on the longer term projects. First of all is doing taxes. <laughs> now it's the beginning of the year so I have to finish my tax declaration. So this will take precedence in the following few weeks in the free time not dedicated to publishing. Then finishing up patterns and preparing them for uh, testing. And I will do testing via email, not via messenger groups because Facebook Messenger is a great tool for this particular activity, but for me it's it, it over it's overwhelming. It's too much to keep up with. And for emails with me it's easier by email. You send me an email or five and I will answer all of them but I will take my time to go into detail and it's just easier for me to do it via email. I don't know why. To recapitulate. Every week I plan to release one thing. One video, one blog post, one something. And then in the rest of the time I should be able to come up with new ideas or write up old ideas and to actually get to completing my goal for last year which is to compile a nice spreadsheet with garment sizes because I'm not sure that I love what we have right now and I want to have my own spreadsheet which I can use to grade some patterns and then we can test them and improve the spreadsheet and then I can use that to create new patterns. Actually that's the biggest hurdle I have right now in creating garment patterns and I know people want them but <laughs> since I don't have that list of measurements for different sizes I'm stuck. So I hope that if I have one or two days a week to not worry about getting stuff out there or I can just sit down and do the thing even if, if it will take me a few months. So that's in, in broad strokes what I want for this year and going forward actually. And if I can prepare stuff in advance from one week to the next that would be great. And then I have more time to dedicate to the longer term projects. If you think that this is a good plan for you as well, you can definitely use this system. Because I know that just planning things out in advance doesn't work for me. I've tried it. I've tried so many systems. It just, they don't work. I keep forgetting things or I overwork myself because I put too many things on my plate and that's never a good thing. And of course if collaborations come up and a uh, certain yarn dyer wants to collaborate again, I would not say no. I would love to. I have so many ideas. 
just need to find the time to write them up. I knew I'd forgotten something. So I want to um, make tutorials on how to make any size of circle in Tunisian crochet with short rows. And this is an example of what you can make. It's a doily that I made on the trip to the Czech Republic a couple of weeks ago. And as you can see, it has eyelets in it. And it uses a very simple formula, which I will present in a blog post and hopefully a video, but on separate weeks. <laughs> yeah, I will give myself time to do that. And then you can use this math to calculate the yolks and any size of circle that you want to make a rug or anything you want to make. So this is one of the things I really want to do in the following few weeks. And if you want to watch out for that, make sure to subscribe to my emails and subscribe to the channel if you want to. But the emails are more important because those you definitely get every time I send them out. And you'll be announced when I have the blog post ready with all the instructions on how to make any size of circle in Tunisian crochet with short rows. So with that, I conclude this video. I hope you had fun watching all of the projects that I made in the past two months. <laughs> if you want to tell me what you've been making, I would love to know. Just put a comment down below. And that's it for now. I will see you in the next video and the next vlog in around the month at towards the end of February. Let's see what we get done until then. So I wish you all a wonderful new year or 11 months left of the new year and I will see you soon. Bye!